How's it going? Nice to see you again on a rather glorious morning. Welcome back for another Beach Talk. Now, back in the 1980s, rock legends Van Halen had a clause in their contract when they went touring that you might think was ridiculous or ludicrous. And that was they wanted to have, amongst other things, in their backstage area, a bowl of M&Ms. Except they wanted no brown M&Ms. In fact, the clause in the contract that has been since shared more widely online was that absolutely no brown M&Ms. Now, you might say, think that that sounds a bit diva-esque for a bunch of American rockers, especially back in the 1980s. And loads have been talked and digested as to why this was so. But anyway, most let it lie. However, to the band, this was really important because the contract, pages and pages in detail, not just the backstage requests, but also the lighting, the sound, the setup, the stage, the build, all those other things. When they turned up, and turned up on the first day, I went backstage. If they saw any brown M&Ms in that big bowl of M&Ms, they knew that the contract had not been read thoroughly in full. So that contract rider that had been circulated and passed to other people, as David Lee Roth once said, he would just doubt that it had ever been read at all. So for them, it became a lead check just amongst them, no one else, that if they turned up and there was a brown M&M in that bowl, they would go through everything on the contract line by line. If there was no brown M&Ms, they had a really high degree of confidence that everything in the contract had been followed just exactly like that. And they introduced huge financial penalties. So this was really expensive. The tour promoters were on their fees, were on the line that any of the detail in that contract was missed, they lost their fees. Now, it's since become kind of rock folklore or rock legend, obviously once the cat's out of the bag and everyone knows about it, you got to find another way of keeping people on the hook. Very simple, powerful way of doing it. It's quite inspiring. In my world, not quite rock and roll, but in the world of forecasting, I have a very similar mindset when it comes to a file these things can get a little complicated as a business starts to grow and scale. And you've got different subsidiaries and a parent company and you want to consolidate it. But in a world whether I'm in charge of the file or I pass the file to someone else to take charge of an update and do a few things, or it's a file that both of us are working on, whether it's in Excel or Google Docs or something else, when I turn up, I need to know, is this still okay? So I don't have to go through and check everything line by line, cell by cell. And you can build up loads of little methods from doing this, from zero checks, from little completion cross checks on a front tab, instructions that you give a client that if you're going to go into the file, this is how you're going to do it. And it's easy for me, literally five, ten minutes, the first time I'm back in the file after someone else has been in it, just to know, am I okay to start picking up where we left off? Or do I have to go right back through everything and just work out what have you done or what have you not done? Super powerful, worth totally recommending in, in the world that you're in, whether it's your product or your sales or something else. You don't have the headspace to always just be going through every line by line of detail in whatever you need to look at, whether it's on the sales, pipeline, marketing, the product, the product spec, you might be making a product. You want to be totally reliant on other people to just raise their game and be in the detail as well. So there you go, bit of rocks, rock stuff happening in my world. Maybe not at the same level as Van Halen. But anyway, want to share that with you from a rather glorious morning. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers for now.